title that you sent me, Making Abolition Irresistible, and um, you know the, the quote that it comes from, the Tony K. Bambara quote, um, as a culture worker who belongs to an oppressed people, my job is to make revolution irresistible. And I think that really, I think, defines how many of us who are activist artists see our work, um, that you know, in, in thinking about how much of the struggle around abolition is a fight against what seems to be this irresistible ideology that things need to be a certain way. And our job is to break that down and show that things can be another way and will be another way. Um, and so that's, I think that's, that's really inspiring to me <laughs> and in any case. Um, Jess, you sent me some questions. I don't know if you want me to just start off with like answering some of those questions. It seems like a good way. Okay, um, you know, one of the things that, that um, you know, all of us learn from other artists in the past, um, you know, other workers, um, uh, I think, you know, for myself, I didn't go to art school. Um, I, was, I went to school to study architecture, which I don't really do now, but I work in housing politics mostly. Um, but I learned kind of art skills by just copying comic books. And that was, you know, as a kid, that's, that's kind of what I did. I love comic books and I love um, copying that as kind of a, um, both because it's fun, but it's just very accessible. I think that's sort of stayed with me is um, how we make artwork that is super accessible and popular. Um, and then as I learned more about um, the work that people had done, certainly I think um, kind of my heroes include like Posada in Mexico, um, creating these broadsides that used um, skeletons and calacas and calaveras to make fun of the ruling classes and to support the revolution. Um, later in, in kind of one of my personal kind of stylistic heroes is uh, an artist named Rene Maderos, who was part of OSPAL, um, Cuba's Tricontinental, and their work creating international solidarity um, and being able to create, you know, to, to, to create art about these liberation struggles in this beautiful, colorful way. Um, and then as a practice, I think, um, for a lot of us who are in this work, um, I think many of us, there's, there's so many histories and lineages, um, but certainly kind of one of the, the points to me is um, the Atelier Popular in, in Paris and, and sort of thinking about, you know, these artists who were questioning what their role was in the midst of an uprising and how you relate to workers in the middle of an uprising. Um, what is your relationship and um, the role of autonomy and the role of propaganda, um, the role of creating um, culture and, and creating media. Um, and so, you know, I think for a lot of us, we're, you know, so I came, came up becoming a, a printmaker and doing silk screens. I learned from a, a group called the SF Print Collective that was doing a lot of street art um, in, in the uh, early 2000s. Um, and now sort of, you know, figuring how to turn these skills into, you know, social media means and always trying to figure out how you get messages um, uh, across. So that's a little bit of like kind of uh, introduction. Um, you know, I think, as I said before, like this, this idea of making 
abolition irresistible is really about transforming culture and transforming ideology. Um, so I brought a little quote from Amilcar Cabral. Um, it says, culture is sim simultaneously the fruit of a people's history and a determinant of history by the positive or negative influence which it exerts on the revolution of relationships between people and their environment and among people or groups of people within a society as well as among different societies. And so that sort of the culture that we draw from that is kind of pre-existing that's been you know, colonized and shaped by capitalism and shaped by the prison industrial complex. We're trying to break apart and create new cultures. And it's, it's deep and long work. Um, sometimes, you know, I sort of question myself and, and you know, we're creating images, we're creating artwork. Um, it's not about that specific image, however, you know, great it might be or you know, reshared as it may be. But I think the sum of all of us doing this work um, is what begins to change. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about a few pieces of work. Um, so this was a piece, uh, uh, a reflection on, on uh, Guantanamo and the prison there. And you know, some of the pieces are very personal. Um, they um, might be, you know, this was kind of uh, seeing uh, a picture in the newspaper and drawing an association between those um, orange jumpsuits and the field of poppies trying to create that juxtaposition. Um, so I'd say this, this is a piece that's, that's much more about, kind of about a personal reflection um, than necessarily working with an organization, which is something that I, I also do. And to me, I, I think it's often a, a balance of those things. Um, you know, I write, I'm a poet, I do sketches, and sort of it's, it's part of my self-care in a way and by how I develop my own relationship to the world um, that is accompanies those other kind of artwork created in relationship. I started doing um, etchings. So these are etchings on metal plates and partly because I was, um, I'm a drawer, I'm not, uh, not really a painter so much. Um, I painted the, the etching sort of gave themselves to the kind of my comic booky kind of style of uh, of drawing and creating stuff. So, you know, Woody Guthrie, um, I did that in 2016. Still just as relevant. Um, next slide. So this was a piece that I did uh, originally, and it was used by Critical Resistance. I originally did this with uh, La Raza Centro Legal and having a series of conversations with the day labor program in, um, uh, in San Francisco and, and other folks who work with uh, La Raza Centro Legal. Um, and we came up with a bunch of images, a lot about the border, um, a bunch of other images that were much more specific to um, day laborers. Uh, but this was, as a sketch, this was kind of what people grabbed onto and so then I developed it as a, a lino cut, you know, kind of like a woodcut style. Again, kind of deriving from that posada kind of style. Um, so, yeah. And kind of the, the idea of, you know, walls and being, being able to free, free yourself. You know, the walls don't hold us back. Um, and then the next slide is another border image. Um, you know, I'm part of a co-op called Just Seeds. Um, we uh, are a loosely based group of, now I think we're about 43 or so artists um, across the US and in Canada and in Mexico. Uh, we each create our own pieces, but then we come together uh, both to sell through um, the website and then to do um, projects um, often with other organizations. We do free downloadable graphics, check out justseeds.org. Um, and this was a, and we'll do um, a portfolio. So this was a, a climate change portfolio um, 
Fabiana Rodriguez and uh, Roger Pete, I think were the two organizers for this and, and set us up each artist with a different organization. Um, so this was done with uh, a group in uh, New Mexico, uh, Arizona, actually more, more Arizona border called No More Deaths in Las Muertes. Um, do a lot of uh, advocacy and support for migrants uh, on the border. Including one of their things that they're most well known for is, is the water drops that they do. They've been attacked by militias. Uh, recently, one member was um, attacked by the FBI and um, a very high profile case, which they won. Um, but you know, a, a group that supports people um, through humanitarian aid is, is seen as you know, an enemy and terrorist by this government. Um, so, um, yeah, this is another linoleum cut that I did for them. Um, back uh, a long time ago, uh, I, I was more involved. My partner was really involved with California Prison Moratorium Project, um, Ruthie Gilmore. A lot, there's a lot of crossover with CR, um, and they used to do a, a, a bowling uh, fundraiser. So this was done for that, a bowl down the prisons. Um, and that was just, you know, I think as, as artists, uh, like I said, I do a lot of uh, drawings. This was by uh, playing around with Photoshop and you know, picking up pictures of prisons and bowling balls. I think, you know, one of the things that um, in this work um, as artists, I think we have certain responsibilities for um, showing responsibly the, um, the negativity and, and the ugliness of what's going on, the reality of what's going on. Um, but also, you know, transforming it into something beautiful and, um, uh, or that at least gives it a different, uh, a different take that takes us beyond um, uh, those negative images. And so it's kind of hard, I think, in, in um, anti-prison work to get away from the barbed wires and the prison towers. Um, so this is a little bit of, well, let's put some big bowling balls that we know are going to roll through that thing and take it out. So, uh, next slide. Um, so I said I, I studied architecture, I studied city planning, so I am a, I, I, somehow maps end up being, um, in a lot of my work, um, maps are kind of a, a colonial project, um, but they can also, um, illuminate things. And so this is uh, a map of Palestine um, from, I believe it was 1918. As a, as a colonial project, it was, it was created during World War I, uh, I think by the British. Um, but it shows all the old towns that existed um, in Palestine at the time. Um, and then as I'm from Ecuador, um, I remember some point being taught um, that a word that we often use, and a lot of words in Spanish have um, Arab influence, but ojalá is like someday, you know, I hope this will happen, is really inshallah, um, God willing. And so kind of that, keeping that connection of languages and internationalism uh, led to that. I think also, you know, we as as artists and maybe myself especially <laughs> i tend to be kind of look to what i'd say might be romantic cultural images um so uh, uh the keys to people's home the olive branch the, the olives themselves that uh are being decimated by the occupying forces um the uh, the slingshot and so I sort of had this back and forth at the time. This, I did this during um, a lot of the protests during the Arab Spring. It's like, well, you know, probably a cell phone would be a symbol and an instrument of resistance right now, but it wasn't really what I wanted to put in this image. So, um, you know, I'll just get to that. Next slide. 
um, we've had, uh, um, and, and Just Seeds had a, uh, an interesting relationship with the Zapatista movement in Mexico, partly because uh, we've also had a relationship with um, printmakers in Mexico City. Um, so this was done for a portfolio that was done in collaboration with the Zapatista liberation movement um, at a time when the government was um, mobilizing a lot of uh, military into the autonomous communities. Um, so this is um, a drawing based on a photograph of, of one of the um, autonomous communities in Chiapas. And uh, the stars in the background is, is another map. It's um, the um, five autonomous municipalities and then the smaller autonomous communities in, in Chiapas um, laid out as, as red stars. Next slide. Um, this was done for another uh, portfolio, migration portfolio, again, playing on the theme of um, walls that will fall. Um, and I was trying to find before this, um, I thought it was Asada Shakur's quote, but I, I, there's some other quote that I think CR has used about, you know, a time when there were no walls and there can be a time again when there won't be any walls. Maybe Jesse can remind me where that quote came from. Um, but, you know, I think in that vein of um, imagining um, a different future, I, I took that original image and, and uh, maybe made it a little bit more specific to the border wall. Um, next slide. Um, you know, I think that I've had a lot of fun recently playing with ideas for what might be uh, flags. You know, what, what are, you know, we're so, and again, you know, thinking of flags as nationalist and colonial images, um, yet also kind of national liberation images. And so what in the future would be new kinds of symbols that we might kind of proudly hang? Um, and so this was, this was my attempt at, at trying to portray intersectionality as a struggle and a fight. Um, so there we go. Yeah, it was, I had fun with that one. Um, next slide. Um, I think, uh, um, you know, for any artist um, living in, in the United States, for anybody living in the United States, we have this very um, complicated relationship to the idea of, of America, uh, even to the, the name of uh, America, um, to the supposed, you know, ideals. Um, so that was that was a, a reflection on the flag that I created um, during the time of, of the Standing Rock uh, um, fight, and uh, you know thinking about how do you how do you portray what America really is. So next slide, and then this was done specifically for. For Standing Rock, uh, we used it as a fundraiser for the uh, legal defense for folks um, during, during that struggle. Again, there's a map in there <laughs> um, of, of the camp and the river. Um, and you know, I think as, as an artist, too, just figuring out metaphors, you know, what's, what's a metaphor uh, um, and, and the idea of the black snake is already being used for the oil pipelines. Um, so that's kind of where, where that came from. Next slide. Um, I think, you know, one of the things that has been more and more in my mind over the last three, four years is as somebody who is not Native living on Native land. Um, um, I think the, the work of land acknowledgement and of, I think, uplifting relationship to people's struggles on the land that we are all um, occupying um, is super important and been, you know, I, I'm also a writer and I've just been, it's been a lot of what I think about recently. Is how, how do we live on, on this land and support 
folks. So I, I created this image and sold it as a, um, to raise funds for the Segoratea Land Trust in um, the East Bay. Um, so, and, and also in, in my, thinking about my work and, and working in housing and development issues and what was happening to San Francisco. And, Bunch of bunch of things in my mind that ended up on it, but it, but I think you know, land acknowledgement um, is something that needs to be linked to who is in struggle of Native people in those lands and how we support whether in, we're in the Bay Area in San Francisco, the Ramaytush Ohlone, Tocheni Ohlone in the East Bay. Or Miwok or Como people up north um, is super important. And I don't know if that's my last slide. Uh, maybe this is my last slide. <laughs> um, so clearly I did this for the uh, Howard Zinn Book Fair. Um, but I, I show this as a last slide because, um, you know, I think my attempt here was to look to the future and to show the past of struggles in the Bay Area and um, a whole, uh, there was a lot more that I could have put up on that wall uh, behind the kids. Um, but that, you know, the, the struggle that younger generations are taking up now build on the struggles from the past. And, you know, there is, you know, a, poster from the 38th strike, from the Alcatraz occupation, from the I-Hotel struggle, the Panthers and the farm workers and um, the White Knight riots um, that I think are, are inspirations to me and, and I hope you know, in, in our work are things that continue to be alive because we're building on them. And, that's, and I think that's, that's back to that culture uh, aspect we're, our, our oppositional culture is constantly building upon our struggles in the past and creating new struggles uh, in the future. So, no, I just noticed that I have, um, I have a quilt in the background that is uh, a Linda Evans quilt. Um, and just thinking about, you know, art and culture is so, um, so expansive, or it can be so expansive. And thinking about the, um, the lineage of quilts um, as you know, there's these beautiful objects, but they were also objects uh, of the Underground Railroad, of secret messages, um, coded messages, and that's that's all that's all that culture creation that um, I think keeps us alive and keeps us moving and connected. I think that's that's what we all, you know, visual artists, musicians, choreographers, um, who are you know doing performance that really um, bring out those struggles. And you know, I think, and you know, we're we're often so caught up in in you know, whatever latest thing happening at a hearing or policy that's that we're trying to write or a mobilization that we're trying to make. Um, that irresistibility of those things to make them you know, beautiful and alive, even while we still have to do all that stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm.